like other estates on St. Kitts, Belmont Estate has enjoyed the glory and wealth associated with the operation of a successful sugar plantation. A picturesque drive from Bastyr to the northwestern side of the island brings you to Belmont Estate, situated between the villages of Newton Ground and St. Paul's. Unlike other estates, Belmont didn't just receive its notoriety for being a leader in sugarcane production. Today, it's more well-known for the mystique that lies behind the folk tradition of the bull story, which is believed to have taken place right here on Belmont Estate in the early 1900s. I have been at Belmont Estate for the past five and a half years. And uh, I've been in the sugar industry as an overseer from 1963 until the present time. My responsibilities generally are to supervise um, the production of uh, sugar cane and uh, also to see about um, the workers, the sugar workers. We still have the horse table, uh, which is used now as a fertilizer storage room. Um, you have the old cattle pens. Uh, we have the, the steam engine. Um, when canes used to be grind, uh, ground in the early 20th century. We also have the, the windmill, um, which dates back probably to the 18th century. Um, there's the old uh, pond um, that used to be used um, as the main source of water, uh, probably for livestock, maybe as a cooling pond for the, the old uh, steam engine. As far as I am aware, uh, Belmont Estate uh, was owned by the Davis family, and um, it probably ran into generations. Um, it was taken over um, around 1973 by Cyro, and um, is now under the control of SMC. According to the old folks, somewhere around 1917, a group of workers on this estate of Belmont enacted the first performance of what has become known to us as the bull play. And from since then, this folk drama has delighted both natives and visitors alike with its colorful and dramatic displays. Belman Bull was the name and needle a big red bull. Right? And the, well, it was more than one bull they had, but that was the real, the real bull to do the sawing for the animal. And the owner was the Martha Davis. And when we used to play bull, we say, I am the, the I am, my name is Arthur Davis at Belmont, chief in charge. And the bull, of, the bull, what do you want to call the name of the bull? And my name of my bull is Repetag. When we went for my youth until they come to some men just white. And the trouble on the car, the trouble on the book, all the old things can make up a book. And the beating of the steel, the car said, touch me, man, you see that bull. You can go, go, you whirl in the wood. <laughs> on another level, the bull play can be seen as a syncretic coming together of both European and African elements. And this is exemplified in the costumes, the music, the dance, and particularly um, the script or the text that is played out in the bull play. On another level, if we were to look deeper into the text as played out in the bull play, we would see and observe a recurring element of satire used as a device to poke fun and ridicule authority figures. 
which of course subscribes to the philosophy that wherever you find an oppressed people they would always use creative means of defying the system, the status quo, or the plantocracy as in the case of Belmont, by using satire to ridicule and to caricature authority figures. All of us can be reduced to one common denominator. We have foibles and we have weaknesses or flaws. And it is these, it is these flaws that people who find themselves oppressed are able to use as elements to attack the system in a creative manner. And I think this is what makes the bull play such an exciting folk drama. This Manton bull is a bull that everybody respond about. Because that's the best bull in the island. <laughs> you understand? As my man just tell you. Catch you in a back and extend it to your room. Send me the doctor. Me no walk by that. 
Where you want, boy? Pull me beers and you see me stop. But doctor, what is your name? My name is Stop to Come Again. He come like he bull. A problem. But doctor, what is your fee? Me fee stamp point and one Dominica and just bring a young girl as she bet. How far are you going to go the chair, doctor? I went to him. Hell, big gloves green and reach right back in a saddle. So you're thing. good then? Yeah, man. But doc, what you can do, the ladder and the dog will surely do your rest. <laughs> significant because Basil Davis, which was the brother of Arthur Davis, was the manager of the sugar factory, 1952. That was the same year I was born. And he was living at Joe's estate at one time. He also lived on the factory, great in the factory, great house. But he was the only one to produce 52 thousand tons of sugar, which is the most tons of sugar we had. So it was a combination of the sugar lands, it was a combination of the, the, the lifestyle of a person, the cultural aspect coming out from the, these people, and also from a historical perspective, because Belmont Estate was one of the more productive estates on the island, producing sugar, because you could have ratooned the candy, and the cane spring back automatically. So Belmont Estate was one of the more prestigious estates. Arthur Davis, as I say, he was always immaculately dressed. They wore their, they wore their white the morning coat, their leggings, their planter's hat. The museum was opened just about a year and a half ago. And it is in memory of the late Edgar Oscar Challenger. This is his property. He fought a good fight, historical fight, in the sense he was a historian. He was also the founder of the Labour Party, the first president of the Labour Party, president of the Workers' League to some extent, along with Tom Manchester. He was also president of the MIS Hall. So he was a very important um, figure, distinct figure in the community or the development of our trade unionism in terms of our archives. It is an international museum because what we have, we wanted to show to think it, that the, from the, what you call the educational aspect of things which Mr. Challenger was involved in, we have a lot of historical documentation inside, we do a lot of research where you could find different lands and deeds and titles. The neglect of culture causes lack of love because when people come here, you can feel this sort of, um, what you call, the heartwarmingness amongst them because they come in and they reflect back on someone, oh my, look at this, I haven't seen this for ages. I, my grandfather used to use this and so. And it all brings people back to where they were. You know, rather than getting yourself in trouble, you could come here, look at something, play a game, a game of chess, a game of draft, a game of domino, and also be involved in a stage here where you can go sit, look at something here of importance, and also see animals of all description. We are inviting all the schools. We have a lot of school children come here. They pay just a small fee of one dollar 
as long as they're under 12. That is nothing. We also have $2 as long as they're over 12. It's just a small fee because the, the number of animals we have to feed and it's very, very expensive. It's not easy to maintain something of a high caliber. I'm desperately trying to ask for whatever assistance could be had from the general public. Because it's very, very important because undertaking something like this is not an easy task. I'm desperately trying to, um, to ask for whatever assistance could be had from the general public. Because it's very, very important because undertaking something like this is not an easy task. We need to create a sort of environment where we, where we have to use our own local artistry rather than depending on the more um, international, Americanized sort of cultures. We have more culture here to offer to the entire world than anywhere else because when visitors come to our show they need to have or to see what we have to offer not what they are accustomed to see and this is very important and significant and there we have it Kittishan folklore at its very best so next time when you visit St. Kitts make sure it's during carnival in December when you're sure to see the bull troop in all its glory and next time we'll meet you on the beat culture beat a soy go <laughs> But then they just only stick up this way for follow and so that's why they will they, they, they I mean they're willing, they're willing, but you know, in them days they, they used to come out pretty, lovely. So everybody used to fall in love with Darwin. <laughs>